Judd Tully from Art and Auction Magazine and Blue In Art Info. And we're here at Sotheby's headquarters in New York City, about to see some highlights of the forthcoming contemporary art sale in London. I'm with Alex Branchik, the head of Sotheby's Contemporary Art Department, who's here to oversee the preview. And I wanted to ask you, Alex, tell me something about the current hunger for top rated contemporary art? I think the market's never been stronger for contemporary art and we really saw that uh, a couple of months ago in November. Our sales of contemporary arts um, were not only the biggest in the company history for contemporary art but also for any category for any auction ever sold at, at Sotheby's. So putting this sale together for February in London we were very mindful of this appetite for blue chip masterpieces by the big names. Can you tell us something about this Mao painting by Andy Warhol? I think for many people, the Mao portraits which Warhol made in 1973 signaled a real return to painting because really the last full series that he made were the flower paintings right back in 1964. So 1972, 1973, when he envisioned this series was really a significant point for Warhol. It's easy, I think, to see why Warhol was so attracted to the image of Chairman Mao. He's always been fascinated by fame, celebrity, indeed notoriety. And Mao was the most famous person in the world in some degrees and certainly the most reproduced. And I think that's probably the thing which appealed to Warhol. It was actually Bruno Bischofsberger's idea for Warhol to make a series of paintings of the most important figure of the 20th century. And I think he suggested Albert Einstein for his theory of relativity. But it was Warhol who came up with the idea with, well, you know, if we're looking for somebody famous, shouldn't we, shouldn't we really be doing Chairman Mao? And Bischofberger being the famous uh, Swiss dealer who had a lot to do with Warhol. And I think it was actually also Bruno who was really instrumental in bringing Warhol back to painting in the 1970s. And I think we forget that. We see his work all the time. He's such an icon of the 20th century. But there was this period where really he was making very, very little. Tell me something about the Cy Twombly painting that you're standing in front of. It's untitled from 1964, which he painted when he was in Rome. And what really makes it stand out against other works from that period is the scale, which previously he'd reserved for suites such as the Ferragosto paintings, which are today considered to be some of the most important paintings that he made. I love it. It's quintessential Cy Twombly. You have this very uh, minimalist architecture of pencil line denoting um, a triptych format or even an altarpiece. Um, this gorgeous grey background which is for me what really sets off this painting. Um, and then these bright daubs of colour where you can really, you know, you, you, can, you can see the artist's fingerprints um, pulling the paint into working it into the surface of the painting. And has this painting been exhibited a lot or has it been sort of cloistered in a private collection for a long time. It is something of discovery and that, that's what's so exciting for us. It's been in the same collection for over 45 years. Um, it was acquired by the present owners uh, in the early 1970s and it's not been seen in public or even really in, in, in private except for very, very few people over that time. It's in incredible condition. It has this freshness and modernity in the, in the, in, in the grey um, the great priming of the linen. And it really stands out as just a, a, a great example of his work. You're standing in front of this grand Gerhard Richter painting. Apart from its great scale, deep colors, I noticed that since 2011, there have been something like seven Richter paintings that have sold at auction for over 20 million dollars and I would assume this picture is in that league or above. It's certainly true that you know particularly over recent years we've seen the prices for Gerhard Richter's abstract paintings rise steadily particularly for these large-scale paintings from the 1990s where he started to have this much more minimal scraped back surface a much more uniform and homogenous surface to his works. This work really stands out um, because it is from that period, 1994, it's called Wand, which means wall, translated into English. 
and amazingly Gerhard Richter kept this in his own collection from 1994 until 2009. So I think that gives some indication of how prized it was for the artists. In terms of the interest in contemporary art collectors, that this particularly, this Richter from this period, what is it about it? How would you explain that you know, great appetite for his work? The enduring appeal for these works and the reason that they're so hotly contested at auction is partly because they appeal to such a, a wide mm. cross-section of, uh, of the collecting public. And I think he has this truly global appeal. And he's, he's risen as one of the mm. stars of the global art market. And, and, and that is one of the reasons, I think, why his paintings have started to achieve such extraordinary heights. Mm.